Hi there, welcome to an update video recorded in February 2021 on economic policies designed to bring down unemployment. Well, in the recessions of the early 1980s and 1990s, the UK unemployment rate exceeded 10%, as we can see from this chart. Uh, this did not happen after the global financial crisis. Unemployment peaked at over 8%. Uh, but there were, there were significant fears that the, the lingering effects of the pandemic could again cause unemployment to increase quite sharply. The, by the end of the year, it could be the case that unemployment is, is around 7% of the labour force, with sectors such as hospitality, manufacturing, and retail and transport all still struggling and shedding many thousands of jobs. The government has also said, of course, to unwind and finish the job furlough scheme at some point, which could act as a, as a catalyst for hundreds of thousands of jobs to go. And the unemployment rate in the UK uh, could well be above 7% by, by the end of the year, which would obviously be a, a major challenge for the economy, for the government and for those people affected. So in this video, we're going to take a look at some of the key policies designed to bring down, well, first of all, control and then lower, the rate of unemployment. Now, in a question, in an exam assessment question on unemployment, uh, if you're asked to talk about policy, we strongly recommend you think about demand and supply side approaches. It's a great way to analyse and evaluate the different policy approaches. So we're going to think about demand side policies first. Uh, what are the main aims of them? Before we look at exam uh, some examples, I suppose the key aim is to generate enough new aggregate demand for goods and services to help lift an economy out of what can often appear to be uh, the, the doldrums and a deep recession. And if there's enough new demand for output, that should in turn create new jobs that then helps to bring down cyclical unemployment and can also help to lower the risk of uh, a price deflationary depression when prices, output, investment and jobs are all falling. So which demand side policies might be effective, might help in cutting unemployment? Well, the first cluster, the first group, I guess, would be the so-called macro stimulus policies. Those kind of big picture stimulus policies the governments often use to kickstart <coughs> demand and hopefully bring in a positive multiplier effect. Central banks, for example, can cut their own policy interest rates to very low levels, as they did in the global financial crisis, and others have cut interest rates this time around. Indeed, there is the prospect of moving perhaps to negative interest rates in the UK in 2021. Interest rates can be cut. The central bank perhaps can use quantitative easing to increase the amount of money that banks can lend out to businesses and households. Uh, a fall in the exchange rate, the depreciation in the exchange rate can also be a key macro stimulus. You see a weaker exchange rate should, in theory, help to uh, expand demand for exports, driving export demand, production and, and jobs. And fiscal policy, of course, can be used on the macro side. In particular, governments often favour fast forwarding those multi-billion pound and dollar infrastructure investment projects. New bridges, new roads, new telecom systems, improved um, flood defence systems and so on. Uh, fiscal stimulus through infrastructure investment can be a key macro policy. A second demand side approach, which many students don't really use, but in fact perhaps could, you could think about, is cutting the cost of employing extra workers. So national insurance, for example, is a tax on employment in the UK. And uh, you might think about cutting the rate of national insurance contributions, perhaps if you take on, if a business takes on a long term unemployed worker. Uh, the government could increase their own spending, offering financial support for apprenticeships and other specific job training schemes, including those in full time education and college. The government might uh, ramp, up, <coughs> ramp up the level of regional policy spending designed to attract inward investment, perhaps, or the creation of special economic zones, attracting investment for domestic production and export. And then there's the wider kind of long term demand side policies, policies that are really designed to to make a, an economy more competitive and therefore in the long term drive demand, investment, demand and, and jobs. So perhaps perhaps cuts in corporation tax to increase capital investment spending, uh, consider tax incentives for research and development projects and crucially funding enterprise policy funding to encourage new business startups 
seed corn businesses that could well be the job creators of the future. So demand side policies are essentially there to try to create fresh demand for goods and services. Uh, there's a, a diagram showing the impact of recession, a fall in the aggregate demand curve, causing a negative output gap. A stimulus policy is really designed to reverse that process. So uh, a stimulus policy aims to increase aggregate demand to AD3. That will then lead to an expansion of short run aggregate supply. Higher output nearly always requires more labour. That leads to an increase in labour demand, <clears throat> which then causes uh, a rise in employment and hopefully a fall in cyclical unemployment. Now, the second main group of policies we're going to focus on in this video are supply side policies designed to bring down unemployment. Again, just a quick word on some of the aims there. Fundamentally, the main aims of supply side policies are to improve the occupational and the geographical mobility of labour and also to try to improve incentives or remove disincentives for people to search and accept paid work. So which supply side policies might help to bring unemployment down? Well, when we think about occupational mobility, the ability of moving between industries, between jobs, crucially, uh, better funding perhaps for and more effective in-work training to give people uh, new skills and to refresh their skills in the workplace, teaching new skills, perhaps government uh, emphasising better funding for coding for gaming, uh, getting students to, uh, to take up more languages, for example, take up more STEM subjects. I think, I think STEM stands for science, technology, um, economics, no, engineering and maths. An apprenticeship of, uh, expansion of apprenticeship schemes, giving more paid internships and things. The key here is to better fund and stimulate occupational mobility of labour so that uh, there's less risk of structural unemployment. Improving geographical mobility is also really key. Can we make house affordability better? Can we increase the number of new homes being built for rent and to buy to keep property prices lower and rents lower for those people who need to move to find work? Can we improve the quality of, access to, reliability and cost of transport infrastructure, including inner city transport and including uh, better hub and spoke networks using bus, uh, light rail and, and rail systems. The third approach on the supply side, these are all, this slide is a great slide actually to capture some of the key supply side policies. Third approach is to try to improve work incentives. Oftentimes, uh, some people may be reluctant to take a particular job because they don't think the work necessarily pays sufficiently. So perhaps a higher minimum wage now rebranded as a living wage, could help to stimulate labour supply. Some economists favour increasing the income tax-free allowance so people earn more of what they earn before they start paying income tax. And uh, also welfare reforms could be brought in, some, some form of welfare cap, for example, on households or perhaps some sort of conditional conditionality added to welfare, uh, which the government, of course, has favoured. Uh, you have to show uh, active search for work to be able to claim claim account and, and some parts of universal credit. What's the key takeaway point from this slide, everybody? Supply side policies are designed to improve mobility, human capital and incentives. In the UK, uh, during the pandemic, of course, there has been the fear of millions of job losses. Uh, the Chief Economist of the Bank of England, Andy Haldane, had said that without short term policies in 2020 and 21, Unemployment in the UK could, could well have reached somewhere between four and five million people. I mean, twice what it is at the moment. The government cut, down, cut employment taxes, for example, including national insurance. Uh, they brought forward some infrastructure projects. They cut VAT from 20% to 5% in, in sectors such as uh, hospitality and, and leisure. Uh, they increased universal credit. <clears throat> the Bank of England cut interest rates and expanded quantitative easing. Also, the policies were brought in to try to prevent the return of mass unemployment. And to an extent, they, they have succeeded. If we look at the unemployment rates at the end of 2020, UK unemployment rate remained, the UK unemployment rate remained fairly low, at or around 5%. And of course, there are countries in the world where the jobless rate is substantially higher than the UK, including horrendous levels of unemployment in countries like South Africa, 
Nigeria and closer to home in the UK, Greece and Spain. Germany has fairly low unemployment, 4.5%. Uh, the Germans, uh, a very, very good example, I think a good applied example to really impress the examiners. They've brought in a system of, of um, <coughs> pardon me, employment protection, a social insurance programme. It's in many ways an excellent sort of management crisis tool in, in a recession. So what the German system does is it protects workers' incomes and therefore supports aggregate demand. So the German government provides basically a social insurance program where employers, businesses, firms, they reduce their employees' working hours instead of laying them off and making them redundant. So they provide an income replacement rate of 60%. And the main aim is to keep people in work and provide income security. So since um, workers don't lose their jobs, they have less incentive to save, perhaps on a precautionary basis. And also the firm keeps people in a job, so they retain that kind of firm-specific, industry-specific human capital, whilst avoiding the costs of, of getting rid of workers, rehiring, retraining, etc. So Germany's gone for the employment protection option. In the medium term, of course, to get unemployment down, to prevent unemployment rising significantly, you have to have those kind of structural supply-side policies. And it's no, there's no doubt about it, you have to invest in people. You have to invest in human capital, including funding for STEM subjects. Most countries believe now that there should be active regional policies to target regional differences in job availability. Uh, some, some governments have used a job guarantee scheme for younger workers. I'll give you an example of that in a moment. And you have to accelerate the shift towards the jobs of the future. Green investment software, health, social care, the jobs that are likely to be growing in future years. Some people think that green investment could well be a significant source of new jobs in the near future. Perhaps a green recovery could be a key way of getting unemployment down. The Green Alliance arguing here for retrofitting buildings, creating new cycle lanes, investment in electric ferries, battery factories, reforestation, new electric buses and things, the shift towards green projects, saying they need £14 billion a year for the climate. Could that be a catalyst for lots and lots of new jobs? Denmark, Danish government finally, has offered a youth guarantee, a really interesting example of an intervention by the government. <coughs> All young people under the age of 30, uh, according to the guarantee, should receive a good quality offer of, of employment, continued education, an apprenticeship or a traineeship within a period of four months of becoming unemployed or leaving college. So the Germans went for this uh, sort of uh, um, employment subsidy, uh, replacing lost hours rather than lost jobs. The Danes have gone for a youth guarantee. And here's and here's the kind of fundamental point we'll finish finish on. You know, unemployment has human economic costs, significant costs. Most governments want to bring down unemployment. Nobody wants mass unemployment. It's an appalling loss of talent and scarce resources. The most effective policies are those that target the underlying causes. And those causes will vary from country to country. So there's no one single solution. The key is to think about the policies that you think will be most effective going forward. There we go. A lot to cover here. Uh, policies to reduce unemployment is a major topic. It's a great topic to, to show your knowledge and application to help improve your evaluation. Okay, thank you very much indeed.